and it fascinates me to see how they go about it. Yeah, it, it it's for me the 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 human body is fascinating. How we can yeah. um, take control of it and how we can sculpt it. But um, something that I w- I've been um, very appreciative that bodybuilding has helped in my family is it has helped my children look at the human body, men and women, in a more respectable way than ever before. Welcome to the Work Hard People's Podcast. We are on episode six and we have a great treat for you guys. We got Chris here today. He's going to be able to dive into his life a little bit. Um, before, we, before we get started with that, though, we have some exciting news um, coming up. It's called the Coach's Corner. I'll let James kind of explain a little bit more about that. Hey, so yeah, we decided we're going to do the Work Hard People's Coach's Corner. And what's that? what that will entail is we're going to do just, we're going to cover a lot of topics that how to find a coach. What is a good coach? There's so many coaches out there. There's so many different things going on. And I think sometimes people try to find this guy looks how I want to look, but is that still the best guy for you? We don't always know. Right. So we're just going to go over some topics, nutrition, different ways to lift. We're going to bring other coaches on and we're going to discuss those topics. And, you know, I, Hopefully, most importantly, we want to give you good information and just help you attain your goals because that's the most important thing, right? I mean, you can be a coach that has like a cookie cutter program and it works for everybody and my way is the best and your way sucks. And really, that's not true. Everybody's different. And what you really want is a coach that's going to find out how to help you achieve your goals. And, and that's what, that's what, that's really what we want to do here. So, uh, but we're going to start that here pretty soon and, uh, hopefully I'll check it out. Maybe we can have, uh, coach Lopez here on to help us out with that one day. I'd be glad to do that. That sounds like, that sounds like good information. So I'm ready for that. <laughs> He's the king of information. He's got so much knowledge in his brain. That's, that's why he doesn't have any hair on his head. It comes out of his I'll head. I'll try to have so much information. <laughs> Wait, 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 There's wait. There's so, so much to learn. There's so much to learn. Why don't I? Oh, have... no, that doesn't that doesn't apply to you, James. Oh, <laughs> just it's just, uh, for me, it's just because I'm old, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, that's too funny. Um, well, yeah, so we got Chris here, um, you know, Bodies by Sin, the ultimate the ultimate coach over here. He's uh, he's actually my coach as well. He probably hates me because I don't talk to him as much. But man, my life is so hectic right now. <laughs> I just can't keep up. Um, but yeah, he's absolutely awesome. And and with that being said, Chris, I wanted to talk to you. Um, I mean, obviously you've been doing, you've been doing bodybuilding for years now. You've been helping people uh, reach their goals for, for quite some time as well. Um, what, where, where in life, like kind of bring us, take us through your childhood just a little bit. Take us through where you, how you grew up. Did you grow up uh, in California or? Actually, I grew up in New York City. I'm from originally from Queens, New York. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, my life is a it's fast paced life. It's not the California sunshine. Um, <laughs> I, I moved out here. I moved to California about um, ten years ago. Um, my daughter was just born, and uh, it was a change of pace, a change of life. But most of my childhood, for all my life, I've been uh, born and raised in New York. So. Yeah, okay, so. cool. That's cool. So you, what, what I, took you what, to California? Uh, a change in life, really. Um, just because my daughter winters. was coming around. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's not so much the cold winters. It was just, um, I don't know, I guess it, it gets a, the change of being a, a dad and I guess turning a new leaf and California was an opportunity to, to kind of also start over with that somewhere else. Gotcha. And, uh, so I took the opportunity to try California and well, I'm still here. So that's so <laughs> how'd cool, you like, man. How'd you like New York though, man? I, I personally love New York to visit. I don't know if I'd like to live there, but to visit New York, I love going there. Yeah. I love and miss New York. Um, 
it is my home. It is the last time I went back. It was um, it was it felt weird being there, but it also felt like I never left. But at the same time, I've always wanted my kids to go back and live there so they can grow up the New York way. But as I got older, I realized that that might not always be the best thing I, that I want for my kids because I grew up in New York, like I said, the fast um, in a fast pace with a lot of things that as um, parents and, and as we get older, we don't realize that we deal with being from New York. It's not easy as a kid, especially from the city. It's really oh, yeah. not easy. If, so. if you're living in the boroughs, man, that that is a, you, you say growing up the New York way. That is a real thing. I, I have been out there many times. I had a cousin lived in Queens for quite some time. She was a, um, a stewardess for Pan Am and uh, her and her husband. They lived in Queens. Damn, and James, I've been you are old. Many times. Pan Am, am. that's old. Pan Am, I was going to yeah. say that. I didn't <laughs> want to say how old I found it. <laughs> yeah, but no, I'm telling you, there's some things about New York. I mean, there's nothing better than the street food there. I don't care if you want a slice, a dog, it doesn't matter, a, a, a pastrami sandwich. There's nothing better than a pastrami sandwich at Carnegie's or Cat's Deli. I'm telling you right now, I've eaten it both. They're fantastic. And you'll find you'll find it somewhere open. That's the good oh, thing. It's always. not like, you know what I mean? It's not like where it's like two or one in the morning and your town is dead. It's not that in New York. In New York, everything is still very much awake. <laughs> for sure. For that's sure. How, that's how Landon is. Uh, my brother-in-law, he's up in Man Manhattan, I think, uh, doing film school. And he said the other night, it was like 11 p.m. And he said he was so hungry. And I think he took the wrong subway. And it ended up taking him like 45 minutes to get this hamburger. But he said it was the best hamburger he's ever had in his entire life. He ate it in five minutes and then was like, Oh, now I now I have to go back. <laughs> he had to take the same subway coming back. You don't want to be on the wrong subway in New York at nighttime. <laughs> that is not a good place to be. That's yeah, subway. You got to learn the subway well. You got to. Oh learn yeah. That well. <laughs> it's one thing in the daytime, but if you're going for a late night snack, there's some things to go oh, down yeah. on the subway. Yeah. That's funny. You better know what you're that's, doing. That's, that's funny. too funny. Oh gosh. So Chris, when you, when you moved to California, did you, um, have you, so have you always kind of followed the the lifestyle of working out and being in the gym or is that something that you kind of went into, uh, when you moved to California? So when I really got serious and I actually went back to a gym where it's, as far as I got a membership, it actually continued. It wasn't <laughs> until I got here to California. Um, okay. I've been to gyms in New York and I even signed up for Planet Fitness and I I was even paying for like a year and I didn't even go, but it was only like 10 <laughs> bucks. So I didn't even feel it. Like, But um, even from New York, I was doing a lot of calisthenics. I was more into like pull-ups and things like that. And I was, mm -hmm. I was very lightweight. So um, push-ups and pull-ups became very easy to me, but I never cared to put on mass or muscle. I just, I was very lightweight. Back mm -hmm. then I used to weigh maybe around when I was 20, maybe 140 pounds. I was pretty lean, but I wasn't like muscular lean. So I was able to do all kinds of stuff on the bar. But when I got to California and I actually joined, um, when I heard what, from Seth Ferrosi is when I put myself into the gym. Because before that, I really wasn't doing anything. I, I heard about, about Seth, Seth um, watching YouTube. So basically... How I started my journey here here in California because I wasn't really doing anything fitness wise at all. I was um, coming from a couple of years of just not doing so well. But I started off with doing cardio and it was a lot of cardio for a while. And I was leaning out, but I wasn't gaining muscle. And then I'm looking into proteins and stuff like that. And on YouTube, I came across this one guy who was talking a lot of shit, but it was good stuff and and i was just very curious about his protein that he was taking or his pre-workout because it didn't have a label on it it just had a white cover on it and he's he was this is when access sledge was like pretty much almost brand new and i was just so curious and so intrigued by him that i just kept going more and then once access sledge had the first challenge going on 
I put myself into the gym. Um, I got a coach and everything, and that's kind of where it took off. Um, I did the eight week challenge as a prep for a show, like I was doing if like you know, like if I've been doing it before. Yeah. yeah. So I did it that way um, because I wanted to know what that felt like. I was watching it so much on YouTube. I was watching people in prep and being strict and. And everyone's talking about how hard it looks and how hard it is. And I was like, man, if it's hard, well, let's try it. So I, I, we did it and it wasn't for like a show or anything, but the discipline of, um, it was an eight week challenge and I did 10 weeks of actual full discipline. That took me to another level in my mind. Like I, it just became something where I was like, I need to continue doing this because it's not easy. Yeah. And, um, I started once I started seeing more of the results on my body, it took over. A, a, and then you won. Run. And then you yeah. won. <laughs> and then the next year I won for the best abs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that's awesome, when I man. first came across you was the first challenge. When did you, cause you joined the demo crew not long after that, right? No, I've been part of the demo crew before that, before the even challenges even yeah, started. Yeah. See, I was, I was as well about I, I, probably four months, I guess, before the first challenge is when I was in the demo crew. Yeah, I was in it for about a year even before the first challenge. Okay, actually. okay, yeah. Because yeah, I came was, across you in that first challenge. That's when I first started really seeing a lot of stuff from I you. I wasn't. I was fat and pregnant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, you I was came with, the year later. The demo crew. Yeah. yeah, I've been with the demo crew for a long time. For, yeah, for a while. that's awesome. Yeah. Just been you pretty you on, there. on the Elite Squad, Demo Crew Elite now. Yeah, no, well, I don't think I got to that status yet. <laughs> I think everyone has their own elite status. Um, you know, you don't need to be called elite to be an elite. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, everyone in the in the whole group knows who, I mean, the people who batter know who you are. <laughs> yeah, I would I would like to think so. I, I, I'm i pretty active all over. In the yeah. World, so. Well, you're That's very super. positive as well, right? That's one of the things I love about most of your posts, the things that you do. It's It's all about positivity. Uh, driving others to success. It's I've never really I've never seen you like getting in an argument with someone online or trying to put somebody down or telling them they're stupid. It's always about showing, hey, this is how I did it. This is a you know great things, it, never bad stuff. And those are the things that drive me crazy because there's so many people that are online. And it's like their whole goal is to tear people down rather than lift them up or focus on the good things they're doing, right? You, you know, that's unfortunately, that's the goal of social media. And that's the only way that influencers and certain people um, can do things or people feel like that's the way they want to um, follow along is by tearing something down or finding flaws in something that, they don't even really know what they're talking about. They just want to, they just want to do it. It's it's really unfortunate because I see it lately. I've been seeing it with people who are, who have it, who came from a dark place where they're, uh, you know, not fit uh, to start off with, become fit, um, start gaining knowledge. And then all of a sudden they turn this leaf where now they feel entitled to say certain things on social media just because now they're on a higher level, they want to bring others down when they were there themselves. Yeah. And I'm starting to see more and more of that also, not just with um, the influencers, but followers too. They're they're getting to a certain point where they, once they build a certain confidence, they want to tear other things down. And I'm not about tearing anything down anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. it's There's so much to life. And I say that because I was once an ass. Like I'm, I'm from New York, so there's no way. I, I'm not gonna, <laughs> That's you know a thing I mean? too. There is, there is you know? an attitude in New York that is yeah, to oh, its yeah. own, hundred percent. And with, with honestly, with positivity comes negativity. You got to have yeah. some of that, or at least understand and know it. And you know, I, um, my posts are positive, and I try my best to uplift but it doesn't come without some negative behind it, without some pain behind a lot of what I say. Um, and that's something that I feel people, we forget also that pain is involved and, and with, um, you know, we try to inspire and bring positivity because there is so much negativity. I mean, 
what works for one person might not work for the other person, but we tend to have to tell people what to do or feel that we need to tell people what to do for the likes and the follows and the and the shares and things like that. And I'm just not there with everyone else because I can't I can't follow along with that. I've tried plenty of times to maybe follow along or think to try to follow along with social media's guidelines in order to somewhat promote myself. But the only way I can promote myself truly is being me. And I cannot yeah. follow along with bringing someone else's da stuff down or telling people exactly what to do. I can tell people what I do, what works for me, and maybe to see things in a different way. And somebody can tell me to go fuck off. And that's perfectly <laughs> fine. But, you know, I don't, I just, there's just ways to do things. And, and, and I think that tearing people down or, you know, you, everyone's in their own journey. So take your journey and walk with it. You don't have to go ahead and slander someone else's because they're not doing what you're doing. And in the fitness industry, I feel like that's the way for everyone to compete as far as online coaching or just influencers alone. Um, everybody wants to teach everyone how to do a certain uh, exercise a certain way. And a lot of times it's wrong also because you can't teach one thing to the masses when we're all different mm -hmm. we're all different anatomy different backgrounds different lifestyles and for me as a coach that matters to me i 100%. can't cookie, i can't cookie cut anything because we're all different whenever i get a client or a competitor i have to know your life <laughs> um i try not to know too much but the more information the better because then I understand what's going on. I, I, I'm not going to just be on top of you for no reason. A lot of us yeah. have feelings. And sometimes coaches are, are, are so strict and so disciplined on top of their uh, clients. It makes it harder for the client to even enjoy or feel like someone understands their life. Well, even different, and, different people have, even different carbs work different on different people. Different proteins work different on different people. We're I all mean, shoot, you go to different. you go to a doctor, the same doctor, same person, same you know, different person, same doctor. The the everything's different. It's not exactly the same. They're all completely different. They're not going to prescribe you Prozac and then Chris Prozac and then me Prozac, thinking, okay, yeah, y'all are all human. Here you go. It's going to be the exact same, or give us whatever you know they're not going to give you yeah. testosterone they're not going to give chris testosterone the same amount and they're not going to give me the same amount because it's not cookie cutter it's all it's all separate you know every like exactly right. what chris was saying it's all it's all completely different every single person is made individually um you know that's just that goes for everything so it's crazy to see and i mean i've seen it on demo crew too people just giving cookie cutter advice you know eat this much and that's the extent of it yeah. Even Seth, dude, that's one of the things that drew me to Seth more than anything was that every video I've ever seen of him, he says, this is what I do. And you can try it, but listen, I'm eating this way. I'm lifting this way. I'm taking this kind of gear and this is my result. You need to experiment. You need to experiment with angles. You need even his chicken and rice MFers video. Hmm. That one, I watched that video, and even when he went through it, it was about chicken and rice, but it wasn't just about chicken and rice. It was right. about, listen, what you need to do is simplify your diet so that you know what works and what doesn't, and you stick with something very specific for a couple of weeks and then consistently add in one thing, not five things, one thing, you add it in. See, does that make a difference? Does that affect you somewhere, somewhat different? He's very open about, listen, everybody's different. Everybody needs to learn for themselves and do some experimentation to find out what works for you. Because what works for you doesn't work for me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I curl my about. hair. You can't curl your hair, James. You know? I can curl <laughs> this, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think that goes with everything um, in life as well, and not just um, as far as fitness and diet and, and the exercise and plans and splits 
but also how you approach people i feel is another thing that we're not um we're not really figuring out how to do that yet and that's starting to be cookie cutter as well and what i mean by that is the um I'm just going to say his name because I don't care. The Andrew Tates of the world and people like that <laughs> who would want to continuously be so aggressive. And I love Seth, but a lot of what Seth says also is very aggressive and one way only speaking to the masses that we can't really do all the time. Mm-hmm. And for what I've come to realize within myself, digging through all of my demons and my past cemeteries, pits and all kinds of things is that I can do things, I can be told and be strong and understand the aggressiveness. Somebody else can't. And it's not going to work for them. And for certain people, we can't always be like, get off your ass and start working. Because for a lot of us, there's more behind why we Mm -hmm. can't get off our ass. It's not that we're lazy. It's that we have something in us um, mentally that won't allow us to actually get up. So that actual attitude can't always be put on everyone and i feel like with social media and these motivational videos a lot of it it's about um it's still telling people that you need to stop doing what you're doing and do this because you're never going to succeed but it's not saying hey are you okay do you have are you do you is anyone listening to you are you really okay it's behind that smile and there's so many things i mean men are dying committing suicide because we're not talking about this because mm-hmm. we're all of a sudden now we're pussies all of a sudden because we're crying or being emotional it's not about that it's that we're mm-hmm. finally trying to talk we're finally trying to express ourselves and when people don't listen we're either going to shut down become violent become aggressive or take our own lives because that's all we know what to do and yeah. unfortunately yeah. that aggressiveness doesn't work for everyone but it's being pushed and pushed and pushed so much that eventually when people are like, oh, well, you know, he he shouldn't have had a, access to a gun or he shouldn't have, he was such a nice man at the school. Why did he do this? There's more to it to all of us than just being successful, being mm-hmm. aggressively successful by being, um, you know, uh, go, uh, we can be a go-getter without having to chase money, without having to chase certain um uh, luxuries and pleasures that other people will take because for me a luxury that i feel like i i have that many bypass is peace of mind and i've been i've and the only reason i speak about it is because a lot of people don't like i said it's It's um, important it's It's important because i mean i've talked to a lot of people and and i mean you're 100 right i mean the motivational videos i mean we watch them every single meeting in my office that we have, there's always a motivational video. And I mean, they're super cool, but I can definitely see I'm, I'm walking around, like looking around the room because I've seen like most, <laughs> almost all of them <laughs> because I've, I've, that's, all, that's all I do. But I look around the room and I see people that get visibly uncomfortable. And the first thing that crosses my mind is I'm thinking, is that something that they think that, oh, maybe I'm just not trying hard enough? Or is there something behind that? You Exactly what you're saying. Is there something deeper than that? Or they just, they understand that that's how they need to be, but they can't get to that point because there is something blocking them. There is something happening in their brain or their life that it's just not enabling them. Yeah, absolutely. Like there's many things that we can't, uh, we can't even explain. Mm -hmm. And with mental uh, instabilities, as far as depression, uh, anxiety and suicide awareness, all of that is things that I suffer from. Mm -hmm. I've come to realize there is no cure for any of that. Mm -mm. It's just how to live and cope with it. And for me, I go seeing any client or any competitor curious to know their lives and their lifestyles and how they are, because that's going to determine how well they're going to perform within an exercise, within their diet, within changing their routine, whether if they are serious to do it or not, or if they need, um, something more um to stimulate them um Mm -hmm. the gym isn't for everyone but uh perhaps um a different type of activity can be um you know what i mean so when people Mm -hmm. are like when but a walk in the park or exactly 
Yeah. Anything that's active. So when like, you know, you see bodybuilders attack, powerlifters or powerlifters attack, bodybuilders or crossfit, anything like that. I understand its place because yeah. sometimes it could be very competitive. Everyone's like, oh, my sport is better than yours. Yeah. But but at one point it's it's just silly to just break down the other. I mean, especially if I cannot say anything about CrossFit because those guys are probably like I have not never done a CrossFit in my life. I would, <laughs> I would I, I'd be up for the challenge, but I'm not stepping in a lane that I've never been. I've never. Yeah, stepped in. yeah. No, I love it. I've I've helped people with diets. I have helped athletes. I've coached football. I've done a gamut of training, and to me, it's more the mental aspect of training, whatever it is, is it those endorphins that get released whether it's going for a walk with your dog around the block every day just you get home from work you take your dog for a walk or you like to go to the gym or you like to run or you like to lift like a bodybuilder or power lift all those things release those endorphins and i love that you brought up anxiety and depression you know i've i've had anxiety and depression in my household not me personally but my wife has suffered from that for decades I mean, we've been to so many doctors, so many drugs, so many this and that. And it has been, it's a, it's a challenge. It really is a challenge to, yeah. to, because especially me on the outside, I'm a very happy person. I don't, I mean, everybody has depression and anxiety, but it doesn't dwell within me. I can get rid of it very easily. My wife cannot, and I cannot understand it. So the only right. thing I could do is research it and try to understand what are the chemical processes that create that and how, when she's in a situation like that, how can I benefit her and uplift her? That's all I can do because I cannot even comprehend what somebody goes through that suffers those things I I because I don't have it myself. And so you have no idea how deep and dark it can get. And at first, I thought myself, even with my wife, I was like, this is stupid, right? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Get out of it. Snap out of it. It's not that big a deal. We all go through it, right? That's no. so crazy. That is such the mindset of so many people. And then it sucks because you're the person sitting there and you're like, why can't I just put my, why can't we just trade brains for two seconds? So you can see things from my point of view, because you feel like you're they're gaslighting you into thinking you're crazy when you already feel crazy because you can't figure out what is going on in your own brain. You're like, this is my brain. Why am I thinking like this? Why can I not process these emotions? Why can't I get myself out of bed when yesterday I was fine and today it's it's nothing. And so it's just when I, crazy. When I first realized that, it broke my heart. Mm-hmm. To realize how I was thinking about my own wife, I was like, man, when I first after doing, I mean, I researched and studied and talked to psychologists and different people just to try to understand what my wife might be going through. And when I realized that it, this is a legit thing for whatever mm -hmm. reason, whether it's a chemical reason or uh, whatever the case may be, she just cannot process the emotion the way that a normal person can. And it literally broke my heart. That I was like thinking, what is she faking? She looking for sympathy? You know, I mean, it was maybe it you was can talk struggle. to Mason because he's struggling to still to still see things from that point. Of view. It yeah. takes it takes time. I promise you, it takes time. <laughs> yeah, he. Uh, I, I've he's been in those better, shoes. But... I've been in your shoes where I didn't understand as well because of uh, um, seeing people be going through things like that where they can't get off out of bed and things like that. You don't understand it. Um, mm -hmm. For me, I, I'm I'm one watching my parents get up to go to work every day, no matter what. That is my attitude. So I've always been able to do that. But I've never been able to understand why people can't really get up and do things until I saw it, until firsthand I witnessed it. And then I started realizing that this is something that's real. And that's when I realized that that aggressive mentality doesn't work for everybody because yeah. you, you can tear someone even more down with that. And something else that recently I've learned that um, you don't have to be crying or frowning or curled up in a bed to be depressed. You could be nothing. Because you could be literally nothing. Literally I have, nothing. And they can I, hide it well. I'm one who can hide it well, well. And I didn't know I can hide it well until I actually realized, I started realizing who I am more. Yeah. Um, coming from New York, 
I've grown up in fear. I've I'm I'm a small guy. I'm never I'm never big. I'm only five six, five seven on a good day. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I've always been in fear, but I've always had to put up a front of this really fearless type of person walking in the streets. Because if not, the lions yeah. and hyenas are going to eat exactly. you. So Target on your back, especially where you came from. Right. So I had to be especially where you came from. I had to become something that I really wasn't in order to survive. Mm -hmm. Nowadays that I'm looking at myself, I'm realizing that I have this um, passive aggressive just attitude completely where it's just going to look like nothing bothers me, but it's all hitting me inside. And I'm I, like in the gym, I could be laughing. I can be smiling all the time, but I'm going through issues that certain people also, when they're, in a depression and they can't get up they're looking at me and saying well you're not depressed because you mm -hmm. can get up and go to work and that's what they don't understand at some point that yeah i can go to work but my body's just moving up here yeah. and in my heart i'm dying and you're that's mentally that we checked can out we, we can relate with that but we can't because one physically can't move and the other one is just moving <clears> like <throat> a robot yep. so i'm the type to actually just move and keep going but mm -hmm. I'm still suffering. And there's that's where I, I started realizing more, even as a coach, it became more important to me to actually help people than make a sale. Mm -hmm. That's that's yes. what I believe in because so many people need more help. And if I can just help a few, it, it if I could get paid with the smiles instead of money, I would have been had a bigger house, cars paid off. Because the smiles that I get from people are, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just also because I feel like I give more, I'm not just going to be the coach for that one second or that one mm -hmm. hour or that, you know what I mean? Like I've had people tell me about all kinds of things in their lives because they can confide in me. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was important for looking for a coach as well. When I was looking for my first coach and my second, third, I've had three coaches already. Um, but each individually you have to learn from them, but it's, it's about the relationships with people and we're starting to lose that with social media. We're starting to distance ourselves. Um, COVID came and now everything is completely distant. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's fine, but we're forgetting that we also have, you know, certain mannerisms, certain, um, characteristics of ourselves that we can relate to or just identify and through um an app there's no way that an app is going to do what i can do for someone on a personal level mm -hmm. um as yeah. far as coaching or as far as just being just a human being that a lot of us were forgetting to do that like we're not just an account on ig yeah we're not just a follow button we're people and, and it, it even that. goes it even goes past that. I mean, it, it's it's not even just I mean, like both of my best friends, they live back in Texas. And yeah, I talk to them and I FaceTime them. But when I get with them in person, my <laughs> whole life, it feels like it's complete because I haven't seen them in, you know, X amount of years or X amount of months. And then we're all together and it's like Zen. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this feels so right. much better well, to be able touch, to see right? them. Yeah, it's, it's touch, touch a hug, touch a handshake. Uh, yeah, it's see people's actual emotions and see what they're doing. Exactly. I mean, one of the things we do, we end every episode with "Don't forget to smile." I end mm -hmm. almost every social media post with "Don't forget to smile," and I do that because I know that even in our darkest times, there's a reason to smile. But it's also selfish. Mm -hmm. When you see somebody else smiling, it makes <laughs> you feel good, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, when you see someone and they're smiling, it makes you feel good. It does me. It, it's contagious, too. Like, yeah. You, it's you like a help. yawn. If you, somebody, <laughs> if you tell somebody to smile, like me, if you be like, smile, I'm going to automatically smile. <laughs> and I don't really like to smile as much. So it's, it's, no, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Wait, so let me ask you this, man. Just changing tax just a little bit. What what kind of drove you to become a prep coach and and literally work with athletes that want to hit the stage? Um, after I did the prep and I did my show, I um, I got inspired by somebody in the demo crew who actually I don't believe he's in the demo crew anymore. He was a cancer survivor, 
and he wanted to compete and you know i know how expensive it was for me and i was already coaching but i wasn't doing the contest um, coaching yet and i wanted to help someone who was going to be somewhat of a challenge but someone who i knew could do it because they just been through some shit already and going yeah. through chemo and so much stuff and surviving and and wanting to do it i i kind of wanted to help him and uh everything i did it i did it you know uh free of charge just because i needed to not only get my feet wet but i wanted to help him with his dream and i feel like a lot of people might have singled him out because of he was big maybe his size or because uh you know uh, coming back from uh, recovery from cancer and things like that so for me i wanted to see where i can take my expertise at or what i learned going through the preps um before i told anybody i was coaching i was already um going through prep because i couldn't coach without going through it even yeah. though i had my certifications um I I don't believe in having a certification and not putting in the work and actually going through it yourself. So um, once I was able to do that, I kind of just it kind of just took off, and it was a dream that I've always I was I would always sit back and say, man, I wish I could be a. It'd be nice to have more competitors and go to shows and things like that. And it just started to evolve. It just started um, snowballing. Um, I so I, I was able to get my first competitor on stage um and he won third place on his first show and that was like the nice. very beginning of it and uh with that came my bikini competitor who is now actually my figure competitor uh, in the making ah, and um she and was your the wellness actually, competitor who's coming next yes, right I'm, Emma? I'm, I'm, I have another wellness competitor I have a another classic physique as well so yeah. it's it's snowballing a little bit, but, um, you know, that's it, awesome, it, dude. It's with it's it's taken time, but it's also taken people to believe in me. And yeah. just and that's what's more important. Instead you know, of just I, picking somebody who has 50, 50,000 followers or something. I have yeah. a client just like that, Chris, that um, he's he's actually become over the years a very good friend of mine his his name's michael and he has a son tyler and when Ty tyler's 14 now i think when he was two they were wiped out by an f5 tornado uh their house was uplifted they were both sent out into a field and lucky to be alive i mean literally by the grace of god his son half of his skull was missing his brain was exposed and his son has like the whole right side of his body, almost like a stroke, right? He has no very, the strength on the right side of his body compared to the strength on the left side of his body is night and day. And I work with both of them. And like I said, for like you did for free, just, I love these people to death and I want them to get better. And his son, just because of, of a lot of the damage and things that have gone on and eating and just different things he's he's way overweight but he works hard every day i put these workouts together i put these nutrition programs together for him they work out so hard they do their best he's he's getting stronger uh we do a lot of isolateral stuff right because of one side being so much weaker than the other but to see his progress like every week when they send me their weigh-ins and they send me their weights and i see that he's getting stronger i mean that is payment enough right <laughs> see that 14 year old boy going through such a tragedy and now doing what he's doing to better himself and then his dad is there with them every step of the way his dad is not in great shape he's a very big dude when when i started with him he's over 400 pounds he's you know uh he's down in i think the 380s mm -hmm. now he's he's just you know, just cruising down nice and slow. We're going in the gym, but they're both getting stronger and better. And that is fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. And seeing someone change um even even outside of the gym is is very rewarding. Um uh one of my clients, plenty of my clients have come to me and the first thing they say is, Well, I, I can only eat one time a day. I only eat once. Yeah, that was uh, me. There's no way I'm going to eat all these meals. 
There's that just no way I'm going to be eating these meals. And once they put the program in, they're eating it. You know what I mean? They're getting <laughs> healthier. They're they're getting the nutrition they need. And um, that ch- course correlates with everything that's outside with their jobs and their future and their 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 relationship with their children, with their spouses, with friends, with themselves. Um, especially the relationship with yourself um that that's the most important um, overall yeah. it's, it's, so so what do you like more you like you like preparing people for the stage or just helping the average joe accomplish a goal or two i never you know <laughs> <that's a good laughs> question. um i like both but there's nothing like being backstage um with your competitors um the the last time i was backstage i was i just remember being back there and i was like this is this is this is me this is where i need to be this is what i want to do um and it was it in a way it was a dream because i saw a lot of coaches backstage that i've seen that i was like man one day one day or, or it would be cool and stuff like that and then i'm like right shoulder to shoulder with people and it's not no more one day. I'm there. Like, you know, I'm, I might be a small time coach, but I'm an MPC coach. Like I'm in there. I'm, I'm bringing people to stage and, and I'm doing it my way. Which Doesn't is everybody start out time. small time, Chris? Oh yeah. I mean, if you don't right? start out that way. You got to <laughs> start out somewhere. Yeah. I mean, Hani Ramba did not start out training Olympian athletes, no. right? No, and he's one of the greatest of all time. So, he, right. yeah, you do it. You work it. You work your passion, right? That's yeah, one of the I'll things I love about just just you in general. The the stuff that you post, the the things that you do. You're passionate, and that passion bleeds through your post. It's not just a picture. Uh, it's not just some words that you write out. You can you can grab the passion from what you're doing it's one of the things i love about you the most yeah, i try especially with my posing i try to come up with a different uh way of expressing myself that you don't see you know that i can't put into words I, yeah. you know i can only just throw it out there and, and show you through my work whether it's my training videos or, or my posing videos and um, i'll say i'll be in the office in between meetings and i'm scrolling through instagram and then there's just you on you're doing your posing videos on instagram and someone's behind me they're like who the hell is that and i'm like <laughs> oh this guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, i love him dude i said that i was trying to think of the right words and the only thing that came was beautiful It it's literally beautiful to watch because it's not, it's, it's different. It's not your run of the meal, you know, front by bi- front, double bicep, rear, double bicep. There's elegance and beauty to it. Where's that come from? Um, pretty much just trying to express myself <laughs> through my body. Really? Um, yeah, I love posing and I love watching, um, some of the great posers, but I quickly found that I needed to come up with a style of my own and start just moving on my own. And that was the only way I was going to really learn my body and how it moved. So once I started really letting go more, it's, it just became, I just, I just fell in love with it more. And I, I, you know, I'm not the greatest poser or, or anything like that, but I put my heart into my posing. And you can tell. I'm not you can tell. To, yeah, I'm not trying to be like anyone else. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to do what feels right to me and to my heart. You know. Yeah, um, it's almost like a dance watching you do your posing videos. Like a like an it's a musical instrument, and it looks like a dance. Like it's so fluid, and it looks so natural when you do it. It's just like exactly like James said. It's so beautiful. Hundred percent. It's just, I can't even put it into words. You're just, it flows so smoothly and you do it so well. And you know how, when, and where to do what you need to do when it's, when you're transitioning and you're like, okay, this muscle now and this one next, it just looks so freaking good. Yeah, <laughs> It seriously is one of the things, man, when you go, when you look at, when you look at Chris Pose, it's like, I don't see, I know you're a bodybuilder and you've been on stage and got medals, but I literally feel like I'm in an art gallery. It's like, that's freaking art right there. 
and that's what I try to, besides the competing, um, that's what I try to do with my posing is to show the beauty of it as well. Like, it's not always about, you know, being on stage and, and competing all the time, but it's, it's doing what I love. And for me, even if competing, if that was banned or for some reason I was banned from doing it, it wouldn't stop me from posing. Um, and, you know, um, it takes work, like all my posing, like it looks nice in the video. So I'm pretty good at editing, but it's, it's so much work. I'm usually out of breath. Um, after a pose, um, I, it, it gets hot in here. I've I done believe it in cold you. Weathers. I've done it in all types of weathers and, uh, you know, one in the morning, 6 PM, it doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm doing it, but it's, um, it's become my craft and it's become something that honestly, nobody can take away from me. Mm -hmm. Nobody can come and tell me, Hey, you're doing this wrong or you're doing, I'll take pointers. That's mm -hmm. a different thing, but no one can tell me that a certain pose is doing is, 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 is the wrong way because I don't feel like there is a wrong way to pose. If it's me expressing myself, it might exactly. not look the way you want to do it. it might not be the way Arnold does it, but it's the way Chris does it. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, exactly. Me too, brother. I love it. Yeah. You have to be, I, I feel like it's, so. Uh, I mean, it, it's like you're saying it's, 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 it's to each person. Like I would be concerned if you walked out trying to act like Chris Bumstead, you know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> like every single person's just the way they express themselves is completely different. And it's just, like I said, I mean, it's just really cool watching you do it. And even in your, in your, uh, videos in the gym when you're working out it's just i don't know man there's just something about it it just looks so cool and you can tell that you just genuinely enjoy it even if it's a day that you're not feeling mentally great you're feeling you're in the ruts whatever it is you still you you're like a ball of sunshine and you just emit that positivity through phone screens through people around you in the gym through your family and it's just really cool to watch <laughs> Yeah, I, I I'm a student of the sport. I have followed yeah. the sport since the '90s, right? So I I have seen a lot of people on stage. Uh, I'll, uh, it's fascinating to me. And when I look at it, it's funny. You, you're, it's like, hey, why do you like looking at guys in bikinis? No, I mean, I'm literally <laughs> like, I'm literally zooming in, going, do you see the feathers on those quads? I mean, I am fascinated or excuse me, fascinated by what goes into creating a physique, right? Yeah. I have never had any desire myself to get on stage. That's, that's not my desire. I like to be big and strong. Um, you know, I keep my diet in check. I lift the best that I can. Uh, but to see what a bodybuilder can do with their physique is absolutely fascinating to me. And they are all unique. I don't care if you're talking about Chris Lopez or you're talking about Honey Rambod or you're talking about Jay Cutler. They all are very unique and bring different packages. And it fascinates me to see how they go about it. Yeah, it, it, it's for me, the, the, the human body is fascinating, how we can yeah. um, take control of it and how we can sculpt it. But uh, um, something that I w I've been... Um, very appreciative that bodybuilding has helped in my family is it has helped my children look at the human body, men and women in a more respectable way than ever before, because they're not just looking at a man in a bikini or a woman in a bathing suit. They're looking at someone's hard work, someone's passion, someone's drive, and and it's really nice and that's something that was important for me to show my children um i was showing them pictures of guys in in bodybuilding trunks before i even got on stage so they could and they laughed about it you know what i mean and mm -hmm. it was like slow 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 until they started seeing daddy with posing trunks and then <laughs> they started seeing other stuff and then they were coming to, to the shows and now they understand what it is so when they see me pose Oh, dad's just posing or I think that's they, so you know. important. I think I wish that I wish that everyone had that exposure because you run into people you run into. I mean, just even some of the bigger athletes with Axe and Sledge, they're gorgeous girls and the stuff they're posting is not 
supposed to be sexual. It's not. It's exactly. to show off their hard work. But Absolutely. people have not been pre uh, preconditioned to see that. So, oh, they just see butt and they're like, oh, my gosh, it's a butt. No, it's it's what they have built. People don't understand how hard Absolutely. it is to build a butt. <laughs> you it's know not what an I mean? easy thing. No, no it's, it's not. It's, it's much more to it, too. Like, that's that's what was important to me mm -hmm. because I'm I grew up in that way looking at you know what I mean yeah I didn't grow up, you know what I mean <laughs> he's well, all getting he's getting all red <laughs> no it's good I loved it too like that was one of the cool things so you have a podcast what's the name of your podcast go ahead and shout it out real fast Oh, uh, the thoughts of sin. <laughs> thoughts of sin podcast. Yeah, so, I and I was checking your that. podcast out, and one of my favorite episodes is you sitting down with your kids talking about prep with yeah. your own show when you're getting ready to. What'd you do? The LA Fitness, right? Yeah, I did the the Fit Expo. Yeah, the, the Fit LA Expo, Fit the LA Fit Expo, and I thought that was fantastic that you sat down with the kids and you guys were talking about things. And your son, that boy's ready, man. Get him a channel. Yeah, that's <laughs> ready to go, I mean, man. No, nobody brings their kids anymore into this, and and honestly, my kids are in prep with me. Yeah, if you really think about it, they're the ones. You know, they're getting the McDonald's, and uh, the first year that I was in prep, or my first cut, they saw the agony and the stress and the anger and all the stuff that I went through while they were trying to just have a good meal and I was upset that they wanted to have that meal in front of me and I had to flip the script eventually and be like you know what I chose to do this not them so I shouldn't yeah. be getting mad but that happens and I wanted to bring them along for that interview because you know um you hear about what the person goes through in prep, but you never hear about what the kids go through or what they have to see and things like that. And my kids have been um, very supportive throughout. Um, they, um, if my daughter sees me eat an Oreo, she's looking at me wondering why I'm eating the Oreo. <laughs> she's like, aren't you supposed to get ready for this challenge? And, so, <laughs> and my son now, he's always like, okay, well, I need to have, uh, we're gonna have rice and eggs. So that's carbs and protein. Yeah, I'll go with that. And you know, they're it teaches. that's so cool, I'm not, man. I'm not telling them what to do, what to eat. They're just watching me, and they're learning through your actions. Them, yeah, and having kids along. I mean, especially in the sport, brings a different attitude to like like Emma was talking about to not sexualizing women or men, but looking at it, a beauty of this. This is mm -hmm. artwork. And then we can, once we can show our children that in the future, we're going to build better people that care for more than what the body looks like, but more about what people actually feel. Exactly. Yeah. We're not being taught that. We haven't been taught that for years. And it's getting worse with social media. So for me, it was... I, I can't help all the children in the world, but I can start with my two. Exactly. On, um, you know, like I said, I've I've made so many changes in my life, um, even while my kids were around before them, during, and it to me, it's very important to give them what I didn't have, which was almost the best guidance. And if there is some type of guidance, just give them a little bit of that because ultimately, you can give anyone the best example. It's up to the person to live how they want. So exactly, I know that my children have pro will have good examples. My job is not to get mad at them if they don't follow. My mm -hmm. job is to be there when they need me. Well, that's not our really. ultimate job, right? Yeah, I have four absolutely. kids, four grandkids. Uh, you know, I'm the I'm the old six dude, great great kids. <laughs> <Just kidding>. no, <laughs> just, hey, come on now. No, but that's our ultimate job is to be a parent, right? If we're bringing kids into this earth, into the into the world, our number one job is to be a parent to that child, not somebody else, us, father, mother, whoever is involved in raising those children. That is your number one job is to be a parent to that child. And I can promise you this: when your children grow up, you will see your lessons <clears throat> passed down to your grandchildren. So, I just yeah. think it's really Make cool sure the way you Yeah, exactly. Like you're you're setting them up for success whether or not like you said whether or not they take that and they they run with it and they're they do exactly 
what you taught them, what you've shown them. Now, nah, probably not going to happen because <laughs> we're humans and right. we don't do that. Right. I... But but you're setting them up for that success. There's not going to be a second doubt of, of, well, my dad did this, but he didn't do this. Like, no, he showed you, um, he explained to you, A, how to help, how to help how to have a healthy relationship with food um you know how to respect your body and how you can manipulate your body in different ways positive and negative and then not only that where you were saying um well you can respect the body and and stop sexualizing it so much but the beauty of bodybuilding what i why i'm so drawn to it is because it's the discipline of the person that is what is attractive to me I like these people can be absolutely gorgeous. That's fantastic. You could be, you can be sebum and be absolutely gorgeous. But what's, what's so attractive is, is the discipline. Sexy, <laughs> Don't even get me started. Is the discipline and the consistency and the effort and the character that it just takes to get to that point. That is what is attractive. That is what looks good. And when you are showing your kids, the exposure that you're showing them now, when they grow up, when they start picking partners to, to, to have children with, you know, maybe in the future, that is things they're going to be drawn to. It's not going to be, I mean, obviously it'll be a little bit of looks, but at the end of the day, what it's going to come down to is like, how good actually is this person? Is this person disciplined? Is this person motivated? Are they driven? And that is something that you're setting them up for. And that's just super, super cool to hear and see because there's so many yeah. people that are not like that in this world. It's really cool to point. see that you're doing that. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it all had to do with just trying to find myself too. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like I didn't, I didn't start, I, I've been a parent for years, but I feel like I just started really being a parent where I yeah. really started understanding what my job really was. At first it was just paying the bills. Um, coming home, making sure everybody has everything. But then I started realizing, uh, you know, it's a lot more than that, but I had to dig deep into myself and so many things. Um, yeah. I mean, but you can't pour from an empty cup. You had to fill your cup first oh, yeah. um, to figure out who you were as an individual before you could be, okay, how am I as a parent? Well, what do they so say on an airline? In case of trouble, put the oxygen mask on your face before you help your child, right? Man, you I know that by script, time. James. If How many times have you read an airplane? Panair or Pam Air? What is it? What is it? <laughs> Pan Am. Pan Am. That's <laughs> but no, if you're not prepared, if you don't have your own house in order, it's tough to, to take mm -hmm. care of somebody else's. And that, that's what that's what I think you guys are getting at. And it's I've learned more about being a parent as a grandparent than anything else. I mean, as a grandparent, I see all the mistakes I made as a parent, <laughs> right? It's like, I'm like, why, why did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> why didn't I treat my child this way and sit him down and have this conversation that I'm having with my yeah. five-year-old granddaughter, mm -hmm. right? And I'm explaining to her the why and the why nots of what's going on. And she's like, okay, Poppy, I get it. Cause that's what they call me is Poppy. And, but my kids was like, what the hell do you think you're doing? <laughs> yeah, it's always different with, with, when, when you're teaching yeah. your kids later on, you see how like, I, I see if I saw my parents with my kids, it's probably way different. Like, the oh yeah you should see how nice my mom and dad are to my son i'm like where was oh, that yeah. <laughs> what? where was this kindness and patience when i was growing up yeah <laughs> like, like that. my dad is so nice to grant my brother ben is so nice to grant and me and him would so like it was wwe raw in the living room i'm like in what how oh, <laughs> like, come on man <laughs> that's funny that's funny <laughs> oh my goodness good. yeah it's a joys yeah, of parenthood kids is it's it's everything um my kids really brought a lot um of changes in my life um the minute i knew that my daughter was coming i had to put the big boy pants up and really like take my head out of the street and really mm -hmm. focus in and even with that um even coming here to california there's many things that i um endured here with my children that if it wasn't for them as well 
I probably still be in it. And uh, one of them was a big drug addiction that I had when I first got here to California um, while my kids were small. Yeah. Um, but fighting for them is what helped me just say, you know what, I need to do something more because this is not it. And you yeah. Know, and even coming out of that and being sober from from drug and alcohol, it doesn't stop there. Like you continue to keep, you have to continue to learn if you want. And that's the thing. I want to be a better parent. I want to be a better mm-hmm. dad because I remember growing up and the, the, the experiences I had with my father. And I don't want my son to go through the same. And my son is even more sensitive than I am. And, you know, I'm not perfect. And a lot of times I've seen my temper and my short uh, patience get get away from me with my children. And um, I'm hard on myself because I'm very calm with my clients. <laughs> and, I, and, and, but I, <laughs> but I could be a bit aggressive um, hey, at home sometimes. And it happens to the best about. of us. I it think that's, that's normal. Us. That is so normal. It, it's just like when people say, oh, your kid is so great. And they'll go be around other people. They'll go be around their grandparents or around or around cousins or family or friends. And your kid's a freaking angel. And then they come home and yeah, it's yeah. the spawn of Satan is jumping off your coffee table onto the couch <laughs> and spilling everything. And you're like, what happened? Well, they, I mean, it's it's scientifically proven that they they can't show those big emotions when they're not in a comfortable setting. So obviously like when you're talking to your clients, you're talking to friends that, that you're not hey, super, Sorry. <laughs> that you're not super, um, you can't feel like you can just be yourself, but with your kids and with your, your parents and, and your siblings. Yeah. You can, it's easier so it really to, to flip that out, switch yeah. really fast. Yeah. You can feel those emotions. <laughs> you said something interesting, though, that I like. Uh, most people, when they have children, there's there's a change that happens. Not everybody. There are those people that it doesn't matter if they bring kids in this world or not. They're going to behave the same way. But I think for most people, once they bring a human being and they realize that they are now responsible for this person, to clothe them, to feed them, to teach them, to nurture them and help them make their way through this life. It changes you inside. It makes you a different person inside. And then to see opportunities where as your kids get older and your kids are still pretty young uh, and they'll get to experience this and I can't wait for it to happen, but You will see as your children get older and they get placed in certain situations and you'll see from afar when they, they make a choice and you'll know they're going to make the choice before it even happens because you, you kind of can tell their character, but you see them and you, you see them make a good choice and then you go, you know what? I taught them that (laughs) and they're, and they make that choice by themselves a distance from you but you see it from afar i'm telling you right now that is the coolest thing you will ever experience as a parent dude that's me with grant when he decides to eat fruit instead of some junk i'll, I'll watch him he'll go to the fridge and he gets some blueberries and i'm like yeah that's my yeah. Right there. that's my boy <laughs> what what a, one of the coolest things ever for me was my my daughter heather had worked really hard and uh got uh she had got some money for for working really hard and she wanted to use that money at McDonald's and to buy herself some McDonald's. And she, I wasn't even there at the time. She was actually with my mother. I think my wife might've been there, but I know my mom was there and they, they were going to McDonald's and there was a dude out there that was obviously homeless and very hungry. And my daughter, I think she looked at my grandma, my, or my mom and said, Grammy, can I use my money to buy him food? It's those things. I'm telling you, those are the things that will leave you speechless. Yeah. When you see your kids make those decisions to help others and serve others, which I see you do all the time. I know Emma does. I see you do it serving others. It's just a huge thing for me. And to see it in your children, I can't wait till you guys see those opportunities because they will come. Yeah. My daughter's big on 
trying to help animals and 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 she always comes up with ideas to somehow help the homeless as well so <laughs> yeah um he is uh, i i see a lot of me in in both of my kids um that's good has she so, come home with any stray cats yet like dad look what i had to no, save him <laughs> there's no way um no we have two i'm good with these two <laughs> Um, um, I can't even tell you how many want, times I did that. Oh uh, no, I know that it, it's no, not here. <laughs> not here. Hard pass. Uh, yeah, I can't. it's a hard pass on all that. <laughs> <laughs> like that's great, sweetie. Let's uh, let's do something else. <laughs> Leave that one there. <laughs> oh, that's great. That is too great. <laughs> so, hey, man, what what you got going on in the future? What 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 lies ahead for? for you right now um as the challenge is winding down those last two weeks after that my main concern is basically my competitors um trying to get them on stage um and just really focusing more on my brand and and getting more competitors if possible as far as me competing i won't be competing for a long time and <laughs> I've been on stage already a couple of times and I've been beaten by people bigger than me. And um, I don't want that to happen again. And so I'm going to take some actual time to actually go put some mass, put on some mass and be able to, um, for me, the ultimate goal is to bring a, a, some more mass, but continue with my conditioning. I, I'm very prideful of my conditioning. Oh, um, it's good. You are shredded, brother. Yeah, shredded. I, I, I think James wants that. to get married, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm not taking anybody at this very moment right now. <laughs> pretty much, pretty single. Um, no, he is shredded, though, <laughs> dude. I see his back. His back is chiseled. I'd give anything for a back like that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna take some time to grow. And uh, now that you mentioned that. I, I do want to speak upon that because I don't think a lot of people understand <laughs> the difficulty this is going to be for me um, mentally. So I've been in a deficit for a couple years now. Uh, so I've been lean for a while now. So to see a reverse and a change in my body where I won't see these lines and I won't see the feathering and the definition is something that is been haunting me for over a year now mm -hmm. it's been a while because um i i did it at a certain point and i didn't like it and it's almost it, it almost paralyzed me from posing at one point i didn't pose for a couple of weeks and um i started doing it again afterwards and i but i was in a cut as well so it kind of started working <laughs> out but um it is something that I don't think many people or bodybuilders, you know, when people say, oh, we're on a bulk. Oh, you get to eat whatever you want. That's probably the best time yeah. for many. It is. But when you start seeing your body change from being stage ready to not being that the body dysmorphia kicks in, the doubt, yeah. kicks oh, yeah. in, the fears kick in um, and all this other negativity falls over you and that's some somewhere that's i've been there and i don't want to go back there obviously but i'm heading in a direction where i'm going to have to face that type of music mm -hmm. if i'm trying to really you know uh bring myself to a different level as far as my yeah. physique. so because yeah, you gotta definitely... eat to grow man you gotta eat to yeah. grow and obviously, yeah that's and sometimes and when eat. you gain that weight <laughs> Sometimes when you gain that weight, you worry, am I going to be able to lose it again? Am I going to be able to get back to that shredded state? Right. I feel I feel like I can because I've been very disciplined on my training. Uh, my training is not going to stop. Um, I've been running more, so that's not going to stop either. Um, but it's how I look at myself. It's basically taking a Picasso, if you will. And then kind of smearing some paint on it where you can't see what it was anymore. So that's what I feel yeah. is going to happen to me. Yeah. And as much as a lot of people probably still compliment me, maybe, or still tell me certain things, it's very hard for me mentally to go through 
It's and a, a mental of, game. It, it is. It oh, is. It is. Me, that is. We have a that, friend who does that same thing. You all know Heidi. Heidi's the same way. That right. girl does not like to bulk. Now, yeah. she built a great pair of legs this past year. But she yeah. really hated every moment of it. Mm-hmm. She she was like the whole time. She was just like, man, I really want to cut again. I want to cut again. Yeah, and she did you great can, work, and she's cutting again. But yeah, it's like it's tough for some. People. It's hard because you tough. just you see that potential. You see how you can get how you look, and you're like, yeah, this is it. This is what I've been craving. This is right. what I want. And then if you if you want to get better you have to kind of go back a little bit because (laughs) you got to rebuild it. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's all destroying and rebuilding, which is, it seems simple enough, but it really isn't. And for me, the work is simple. It's simple, but it's not easy. I say that all the time. (laughs) Yes, And I love that. I love that saying it's simple, but it's not easy. And same thing with this. For me, it's going to be simple to eat because I am, I've always been someone who can eat. Like mm-hmm. that, Booty. I can eat probably all three, of, all of our plates, and still, if you leave something behind, I'm gonna, gonna go finish for that. It too. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's me. Um, me too. That's why I'm a fat guy. <laughs> yeah, so I don't have a problem putting on the side of trying to eat. I have a problem with wanting to, losing, wanting to, but also feeling like I'm still worth it, even when mm-hmm. I don't have the lines. Now, my yeah. lines shouldn't shouldn't define how I feel. Mm-hmm. But in my mind, that's what I go through. And I know that other people probably suffer from the same yeah. once you start making certain changes. I know people who don't want to go on a cut because they don't want to lose their size. And that's something daunting for them to, you know, that's why they'll steer away from competing, not because they can't do it, but they don't want to lose um, the strength or the size. And I've seen that's me, bro. comfort. Yeah, it's a comfort thing. The thing I can't, I hate uh, when I'm dieting down because I know I need to do it from time to time. When I'm doing it, I hate the flat feeling. I do not like not feeling full. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That is the worst for me. It. it, I like feeling (laughs) when I got glycogen in there and I am pumped and full. I love it. I, I don't need to look good naked. I want to look good in a t-shirt. I'm good with that. I'm 51 years old. I can live with that, right? But I don't like it when I don't feel full. I need to be both. I need to be strong and I need to look as shredded as possible. And <laughs> when, I, when, I'm, when I don't feel as strong in the gym, it messes with me too. Um, yeah. Even today, I was... Um, I was with another um, bodybuilder, my competitor, and uh, she asked me, she's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, well, this is too heavy right now. And it <laughs> fucking sucks. And it it's works. like, and, and, you know, thankfully I have, um, I have her there to remind me that I've been on a deficit for so long. I'm, yeah. I'm not having any, like carbs are almost non-existent and I'm still like pressing 80 pounds. I'm, you know what I mean? It's not yeah. like I'm not strong. But I have to look at the variables of it. I'm a little hard headed. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm a lot more than a little bit. So <laughs> I think so. it's going to be a really good because uh, you just talk about how you're once constantly wanting to try to grow to be better and get better and learn new things and just develop as a human, um, as a parent and all that stuff. I think it's going to be a really good challenge for you. And I think it's going to be really cool to for us to I would love as you go through, I would love for like you to come back on. Um, and we kind of pick your brain a little bit and walk through the process with you, whether you want to or not. I don't know, but it's about civility. (laughs) Um, and I mean, always, you'll always have us here, um, to help you. If you just feel, if you feel like a fat fuck, then just let us know and we'll, we'll help you out. (laughs) We'll make you feel better. I promise. (laughs) I appreciate you for the support of that. Yeah. (laughs) Ah, We've been going at it for a minute, man. So Hey, is there anything you're looking to, uh, I know you're sponsored by a few things. You got some codes out there. I know you're sponsored by Axe and Sledge. I know you're a member yeah. of the demo crew, but I saw you doing some stuff with some nut butters. What's going on with that? Yeah. So I'm also with a uh, master with fit butters. Okay. Um, it's a company that I kind of just, I've been seeing for such a long time. 
Um, I've been seeing different companies of of, of uh, tree butters and stuff like that, but this one reached out more to me because of the owners, um, because of their uh, authenticity and just what they stood for. So um, I never pull the trigger on things because I'm always like, ah, like protein cereal and um, – <laughs> Uh, flavored egg whites and stuff like that. I never pulled my trigger or, or anything like that if it's not X and Sledge, really. But this one, I was like, wow, like, let me try it. And they were coming out with a, uh, or they were finishing the last of their red velvet cake. So I, I was like, let, they're not going to have it again. Let me try it. I got on it. And let me tell you, Fit Butters is dangerous. <laughs> and you had all, you had all your kids try it too, didn't you? Yes, yeah, that I was, got, good. That was kids, good. I saw that we, too. Every time I get a new batch of different flavors, I I, I get them involved with uh, taste testing as well. That's nice. cool. I've been trying to get, like like I said, I've been trying to get them more involved with things that I'm doing so they don't see that it's just, you know, give them a little bit of fun, but also to see, uh, you know, who I am. I'm, I'm with my kids all the time mm -hmm. um, and they're going to be around. And um, part of who I am is my kids. So um, with the nut, with the Fit Butters, um, it's family orientated and I just mean the kids it's it's something to look forward to um, every time there's a new flavor or, or we get a new flavor to try out it's uh you know they 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 have they have fun getting around and trying stuff he, as, as much as my son says he doesn't like peanut butter but he's still he's there he's gonna try it and give his full opinion I, I um <laughs> they have fun with it so yeah that's cool that. do you have like a code with them yeah, my code with Fit Butters is Coach Sin. So if anybody's okay. interested in that, and and what's this, Action Sledge? What's your Action Sledge code? My Action Sledge code is C Lopez ten. Okay, and you, uh, we got those, so we'll 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 post them up and put them in the description uh, down below, so everybody can uh, get hold of those if they want to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been with Action Sledge for so long. I mean, I've tried different pre-workouts, proteins, and stuff like that. And I found that Excellent Sledge, lately, their new flavor palette of protein has been the best to date. Um, yeah. Like it's Did you get the elf cake. ones? No. I, I, I think I'll you told me honest, you didn't get them. I'm not a big fan of, like, when they were like, oh, Bark and this other. I was like, okay, I'm not really – a Christmas person to like bark and stuff like that. Like, no, give me the regular stuff. So I wasn't going to buy, I'm sorry, but I wasn't going to buy a tub of something that doesn't sound too appealing. So yeah. I, I did. Let I me tell you that you. peppermint bark with some iced coffee. Mint good stuff. is so good. I thought I pulled up and got a Starbucks drink and I was shook. I was like, there ain't, I think who was it? Uh, I think it was Samantha. She posted it on Demo Crew. And I was like, man, I got to try this. And so I yeah, put, I did it. And I was it. like, oh, yeah. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> I see that. And then I'm like, man, that's, I'm curious. But I don't know if I'd still. Right now for me, it's birthday cake. It's Oreo cookie. It's red velvet. And it's the banana peanut butter. Those are the four that I have on yeah. my counter. And it's like, what's today? Like today, I, it's like I can literally. <laughs> Either I'm drinking it, I'm making protein pancakes, or or something of that. Of That's that. So I love cool. it in my oatmeal, the banana. In yeah, the it's good. Yeah, in oatmeal. I'll, yes, I'll, I actually I use the peanut butter banana specifically for my oatmeal. Yeah, because I love like it. the mixture of the vegan uh, consistency. Yeah, better yeah. Than, it's, it's the just strawberry dipping dots with oatmeal and strawberries in it. That's good too. I haven't I remember tried that. Je I remember Jesse did that a while back, and I tried it, and I was like, "Oh, that slaps. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It good tastes like dessert." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you put some of that. I get some protein pancakes with like the the birthday cake, and then you get some fit butter and smear some on top of like Ooh. your favorite. Like, that sounds good. Gain <laughs> weight just sitting here. I'm supposed to be in a cup, bro. Come on. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, trust me. So am I. And I have a whole pantry full of it. And it's That's funny. very different. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude. Well, I tell you what, man. We, I loved having you on. I'm so glad you uh, did this. And thank you very much for coming on with us. It was uh, 
nice to nice to chat with you. We look forward to being able to do it again for sure. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, I'd be more than honored to come back. I, I really had a good time. I really enjoyed talking. So <laughs> good. it's good. Everyone's quiet all of a sudden. Like, oh wait, what? do you want me to? I'm oh, sorry. I thought you. I thought I was waiting on James. It's, he's waiting oh, on no. me. Oh no! Yeah, I'm waiting on Emma. Linda. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> my brain. This my is brain the is Emma gone. show tonight. I know. I'm sorry. My brain is gone today. All right, guys. Uh, well, we'll kind of wrap it up, and you will definitely be having uh Chris on again. And uh, if y'all feel free to check him out on Instagram, it's it's Bodies by Sin, isn't it? On Instagram, yeah, Bodies by Sin Fitness. Fitness, yeah. So Bodies by Sin Fitness on Instagram. Feel free to check him out. Um, you'll can see about the gorgeous posing videos that we've been talking about and give him uh, some likes and follows and some love. Um, but other than that, I mean, thanks for, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and, and follow us, give us some love as well. Cause we need all the love spread all the love around. Um, but with that being said, James has one last thing to say. It's his favorite thing to say and I'll let him take it away. It is my favorite thing to say. <laughs> and we do love y'all and remember people's. Don't forget to smile. Thanks so much for watching or listening. Remember, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can find us on Facebook at Work Hard People's LLC or Instagram at Work Hard People's LLC. You can also find us on our website at workhardpeoples.com. Have a great day or night. Don't forget to smile.